They say there's an explanation for everything. But I don't think that goes where Irma Peterson is concerned. <laughs> Why do I say that? Well, a few minutes ago, I told Irma that in the Arctic Circle, the nights are six months long. And Irma said, Gee, when a girl goes to a dance, her mother must say, Be a good girl and try to get home before July. <laughs> Those things uh, jolt me, but tonight I'm too busy addressing a stack of envelopes for Richard to waste any time trying to straighten Irma out. Jane, who are you writing to? No one we know, honey. You see, Richard is greatly interested in the primary elections, and he's coming here with a stack of election circulars he wants me to mail. Circulars? Yeah, you know, there's a picture of the man, and underneath it is a description of what he's done. Oh, I know, like those pictures of Al's friends that are hanging in the post office. <laughs> This is a different kind of circular. You see, these men hold offices. They don't hold them up. <laughs> Come in. Well, here they are, Jane. Hello, Irma. Hello, Richard. I'll take the circulars, Richard. Gee, I've never seen you so excited. Well, this is exciting and important work we're doing. If, if we can get the voters behind the reform ticket and elect our man, Robert Colby, this district will at long last be represented by an honest man in council. Richard, is there any way I can help? Yes, yes, you can vote. No, I can't. Those voting machines always get me so confused. Well, honey, what's there to be confused about? All you do is press down a lever. Yes, but I don't know where to put the nickel. <laughs> well, I'll explain it to you later, Irma. Richard, is there anything else I can do for you? Uh, no, no, just get the circulars out. I'm going down to headquarters and keep things moving. Oh, and uh, keep spreading the word around. Colby for councilman. All right, Richard, see you later. Jane. What, sweetie? Isn't there any way I can help in the election? No, honey. Electioneering is important work. It takes the toil of endless hours. Well, that's why I want to help. What good is woman suffrage if I don't get a chance to suffer? <laughs> get it, will you, honey? I'm busy. Hello? Who is this? Joe? No, Joe. Al isn't here yet. Huh? You have a job for him. Oh, Joe, you're early. April Fool is ten days off. <laughs> oh, you're serious? Well, I'll tell him to call you. Uh, goodbye. What do you think, Jane? Joe has a job for Al. How do you like that? His best friend turning on him after all these years. <laughs> Jane, uh, can I just fold the circulars for you? I want to do something. Well, honey, I don't want you to feel hurt, but I haven't got too much confidence in you ever since your cousin brought those campfire girls up here to hold a meeting. Well, I thought that a log fire would make them feel at home. Yes, honey, but we have no fireplace. <laughs> well, everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, I know, Irma, but you don't use judgment. Now, honey, look at your shoes. You paid $12 for a pair of $5 shoes. Why don't you shop around? Well, in the future, I will. Well, look, honey, if you really want to help me, you can run down to the post office and get me a hundred three-cent stamp. All right, Jane, and don't worry, I won't buy at the first post office I see. <laughs> I'm going to shop around. Oh, um. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little cottages. One with a clinging vine, one with an empty attic. <laughs> Kropotkin, a man like you should have been a comedian. <laughs> Janie, darling, could I borrow, please, your dark glasses? Surely, why? Well, if you'll excuse the expression, I'm taking Mrs. O'Reilly out tonight. <laughs> oh, now, Professor, don't try to kid us. We know you're falling more in love with her every day. Janie, when a man courts his landlady, this is not love. This is known as taking the bull by the horn. <laughs> Horns. That's the way Miss O'Reilly combs her hair. Oh, hold it, will you, the two of you? I've got to get these circulars out for Richard. Irma, will you please hurry to the post office? All right, Jane. Now, honey, you know what to get. Yes, a three-dollar stamp. No, 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 a, a hundred three-cent stamps. Now, here, I I'll write it down, sweetie, and don't shop around, please. Goodbye. 
Janie, what's all this correspondence here? Oh, this. Well, Richard and the Reform Party are trying to get Robert Colby elected in the primary so we can get good, honest representative and throw honest Jim Blake right out of office. That I'm for. That honest Jim is such a crook, when he's campaigning, he couldn't kiss a baby without stealing the diaper pin. <laughs> why we're all working so hard to get Colby in office. You know, Professor, you could help. You tell all the customers at the Gypsy Tea Room to vote for Colby for honest government. Well, I'll tell them, Janie, but I don't think it's going to help. Why not? After they eat at the Gypsy Tea Room, they're not thinking of good government. They're more interested in a good doctor. <laughs> tell me, Janie, is Irma helping you elect Colby? No. Then he's got the chance. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's got to win, and honest Jim must go. Professor, how about wearing a Colby for Councilman Pin? Huh? Oh, I'd be glad to. Here, here you are. Oh. oh, no, Professor, not on your trousers. <laughs> on your jacket. Please, Janie, I know where the pin is needed the most. <laughs> but you can count on me. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, honestly, I'll never get these circulars out. Never. Hello? Who? Oh, Joe. No, Al isn't here yet. Well, you know Monday is his busy day. That's when he stands outside of the Yankee Stadium and waits for balls to come over the fence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll have him call you, Joe. Come in. Hiya, Jane. Where's Chicken? Oh, she went on an errand for me, Al. You know, your friend Joe has been calling like mad all day trying to get you. <laughs> that guy's uncanny. But he ain't cutting in on this deal. It's my own idea. It's a birth certificate with an adjustable calendar for dames who are getting old. <laughs> Al, will you believe me I'm not interested? And I'd appreciate it if you'd call Joe before he wears out the phone. Burma comes back. I'm downstairs getting some ink from Mrs. O'Reilly. Tell her, huh? Hmm. Dynamic day. Must be a thyroid condition. <laughs> well, while she's gone, must make that telephone call. And there's only one man to call. Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, what is your problem? A job for me? Joe, what did I ever do that made you sore? <laughs> no kidding. You mean I get 5000 a year? Joe, it sounds too good to be honest. <laughs> oh, it ain't honest. It's a political job. <laughs> well, Joe, what sort of work do I do? You see, I couldn't take the taxpayer's money for nothing. Huh? I'll have an important duty to perform? I keep whales out of Central Park Lake? <laughs> Joe, there ain't no whales in Central Park Lake. Oh, in an election year, you never ask questions. <laughs> so what do I do to get the job, Joe? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd be glad to campaign for him. He's a good man. You can count on me. Goodbye, Joe. Oh, hello, Al, honey. Well, what's the matter, Chicken? Why so glum? I bought these stamps for Jane. Chicken, you got the stamps all pasted on a cardboard. <laughs> well, the wind was blowing. I was afraid I'd lose them. <laughs> oh, gee, I don't know why Jane has no confidence in me. Forget it, Chicken. Golden days are ahead. Before you know it, little Al will be making $5,000 a year. Oh, Al, they'll catch you and destroy your printing press. <laughs> No, Chicken, you know I wouldn't be a counterfeiter. This is legitimate. We got to help elect the one man who can give us clean, decent government. Who, Al? Honest Jim Blake. Oh, but Al, Jane and Richard are campaigning for Robert Colby. They say Jim Blake is a crook. Chicken, it ain't exactly being crooked. You see, politicians figure they got to get what they can while they're in office because the public forgets them so quickly. You take President Hoover. In office four years and watch his reward. Got his name on a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and, and Adams got his name on a hat. Lincoln is on a penny. And Wilson is on a ham. It's, it's enough to frustrate an honest man. Oh, but, but the papers say Jim Blake is the most dishonest man that was ever in office. Just propaganda, chicken. Look at the things he's done for the city. Take that, that beautiful highway he built last year. But it cracked in two weeks. Well, Jim couldn't help that. Strong weeds. <laughs> about that bridge he built? It, it fell down in three days. Well, honest, Jim couldn't help it if the rain dissolved the cement. <laughs> Besides, honey, you're looking at the bad side of him. Look at the good he's done. Built his wife a beautiful home. 
Gave her a mink coat. Gave his brother a pardon. There's a man with a heart. Gee, Earl, I, I don't know what to do. I, gosh, I hate to work against Jane. Chicken, face this thing realistically. I love you. And with five Gs a year coming in, we can get married. And there'll be no more of those long hours going to work every day. You can get a part-time job. <laughs> you, you'd really marry me, Al? Why, sure, I'd marry you, chicken. You think I like sleeping on park benches every day until four in the afternoon? I want to have a home to do that in. Gee, <laughs> Al, I, I don't know what to say. D do you think Jane will be angry with me if I help you? Well, chicken, you know Jane has no confidence in you. That's true. She has lost a little confidence in me. Ever since I mixed the brown and white shoe polish together for my sport shoes. <laughs> well, what do you say, Chicken? Will you help me with Honest Jim's campaign? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll do it because I know it means you'll marry me, and it'll show Jane I'm smart enough to mix in politics, too. That's the spirit, Chicken. But remember, we don't let Jane know that we're working for the opposition. If they want to work for Colby, okay. We're for Blake. All right, Al. Gee, I'm so excited about you and politics. Who knows? Someday you may be governor and I'll be your wife. Never can tell, chicken. Imagine me, a governess. <laughs> Say, ladies, you can tell a lot about a soap just by feeling it. Next time you unwrap a cake of swan, run your fingers over the surface. Feel how it differs from other soaps. It feels smoother. As Susie Swan says, Swan is really different. The feel of swan will tell you in a minute. Just feel a cake of swan and you will see that swan is different as can be. The reason, friend, it's super cream blend. Susie. Yes, only Swan has this exclusive super creamed blend. That makes Swan differ from other soaps. And ladies, you can feel the difference when you run your fingers over a cake of Swan. It feels smoother. And when you take your bath, scoop up some of the luscious Swan lather. It feels different too, creamier, richer. That's why Swan does an extra mild, extra thorough cleansing job on your skin. That's why a Swan bath is such a pleasure. And what's more, Swan's exclusive super creamed blend makes Swan cleanse so gently, rinse away so thoroughly, that your skin looks smoother, fresher, younger. Yes, don't ever forget, the Swan look is a young look. <laughs> for Robert Colby is just going wonderfully. I never knew life could be so hectic, but I love it. Richard and I have been working day and night, but we're too thrilled to be tired. We're going to put an honest man in office, and nothing is going to stop us. In fact, we're at a big rally now singing our campaign song. Vote for Colby, vote for Colby, he will never fail. Sure that we'll elect Colby. Hello, oh, Jamie. Oh, Richard. Professor, I'm so glad you could come to the rally. Yeah, Mrs. O'Reilly stood me up. She said I insulted her. Why? She wanted to go to a horse show. I told her she wouldn't have a chance. <laughs> Boy, if Jane and Richard could only see us now, they'd know they're licked. Al, I've been doing a lot of good work. Al, what do you mean, Chicken? Well, I think Honest Jim has been wasting his time. He's kissing all the babies, but they can't vote. <laughs> what about it? I've been kissing their fathers. <laughs> chicken, you don't have to overdo it. Uh, by the way, did you get rid of all those circulars I gave you? Yeah. Good, good. And where I got rid of them, no one will ever find them. <laughs> chicken, I meant to give them out, not hide them. 
Oh, Al, isn't there anything more I can do? No, no, chicken. Don't want you to overwork your little mind. <laughs> oh, I haven't been overworking it, honey. I, I hardly know it's there. <laughs> well, chicken, that's enough for today. You go home and don't forget, tell all your friends to vote for Blake. All right, Al. Gee, I can't wait until you get the job and we get married. My, my hope chest is all ready. I, I just put in six baseballs, three tennis rackets, and a pair of skis. Well, what's the idea, chicken? Well, I read in a book that a wife should be a good sport. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, honey. Where have you been? Oh, places. Places? What are you doing with that Jim Blake pin? Irma, you're not electioneering for that crook. Well, Al says he's not so bad, and, and if he's elected, Al will get a job, and Al promised to marry me. Sweetie, if I bought a box of rice every time Al promised to marry you, the Chinese wouldn't have anything left to eat. <laughs> oh, Jane, I, I love Al, and I, I want to get married. I want children, a home, and, and a place to put all those statues I want at Coney Island. <laughs> I know you do, honey. But, but won't it bother your conscience to wake up every morning and say, Irma Peterson, you're a bad citizen? I suppose so, but it'll bother me more to wake up every night and say, Irma Peterson, you're an old maid. <laughs> well, honey, it's your life, and since I know Honest Jim doesn't have a chance, you can do what you want. Oh, thanks, Jane. I, I want to practice what I'm going to say to the girls at the office tomorrow. <laughs> Well, there stands Irma in front of the mirror. And it's a sight that would make Patrick Henry turn over in his grave. She's evidently practicing the gestures that she's going to make in her speech. But such gestures I have never seen. Now she's shaking her fist. Now she's waving her arms in defiance. She's evidently scored her point. She's also knocked the clock off the mantel. <laughs> now she's shaking her finger and she's pointing to her head. This can only mean that Blake is solid. <laughs> now she's taken the Manhattan telephone directory and she's holding it over her head with all her strength. Irma, honey, what's the idea of that? Well, I want to show him that Blake will carry New York. Oh, you're <laughs> Come in. Hello, Jane. Richard, well, what's the matter? Your face is white as a sheet. Jane, I'm afraid that all of our work has been in vain. Look at this headline. What's it about, Richard? I'm too nervous to read it. No, well, honest Jim Blake and his machine have dug up a scandal about Colby that'll cost us every woman's vote. What was it? Well, they claim that 18 years ago he struck his wife. And on Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, no, it can't be true. No, it isn't. It was just an unfortunate accident. He just happened to trip with a hammer in his hand. <laughs> yes, but Blake has distorted the story. Oh, Richard, what can we do? Well, I understand that Blake is addressing the heads of all the women's clubs at Sloan's Hall tonight. Now, we have to go there with Colby so he can prove his innocence. Yeah, all right, Richard, but I'd, I'd like to inform you that we have a Benedict Arnold in our midst. Oh, he won't help you, Jane. We've got important people, too. Jane... <laughs> <laughs> Jane, you mean that Irma is campaigning for that thief, Blake? Y yes, I, I am. Well, I'm surprised at you. Come on, Jane. And goodbye, Irma. Goodbye, Irma. <laughs> Vote for Jim Blake. Vote for Jim Blake. Square a star, you know. <laughs> Come in. Hey. <laughs> What's the matter, Chicken? Richard and Jane are mad at me because I'm trying to help Jim Blake. Gosh, are you sure he's honest? I already told you, Chicken. Are you sure you'll marry me if I help him win? Am I sure? Chicken, I already told three of the boys to stay out of trouble because I might need them for ushers. <laughs> All right, Al. And Chicken, tonight's the night you can really help the campaign. You see, Honest Jim is going to address the women's club at Sloan's Hall tonight. Well, that's where Jane and Richard are going. Oh, we'll make monkeys out of them. Now, the chief wants you to come up out of the audience like you wasn't rehearsed and testify that Honest Jim is the lady's friend. 
We gotta swing the women's vote. But, Al, why did they pick on me? Chicken, there's more chance of you saying the right thing. You don't know him. I mean, uh, <laughs> they, 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 they don't want anybody too professional looking. They want somebody with charm and, and personality and what the French call c'est la guerre. <laughs> All right, Al. I, I'll do it if only for our children's sake. Yeah, every time I see children, I get goose pimples. Of course, you wouldn't understand. You'll never know what it is to be a mother. <laughs> well, Chicken, now you got the right spirit, and it'll teach Jane not to underestimate us. That's right. She wouldn't let me on her bandwagon. Well, before I'm through, even my friends will want to take me for a ride. <laughs> Well, Chicken, this is Sloan's Hall. Now, when we get inside, it's up to you to help swing the women's vote for Honest Jim. But, Al, when they call me up from the audience, what shall I say? Well, just say that uh, you don't know Honest Jim personally, but people say he will undertake everything that good government stands for. Undertake everything uh, good government stands for? Well, that's easy. I'll remember that, Al. Well, Chicken. <laughs> and remember, my job, our whole future together depends on this. Let's go inside. Hey, Chicken, look, Richard's about to speak. Oh, well, Richard and Jane are, are for Colby and we're for Blake. I feel like that Japanese spy, Harry Carey. <laughs> Shh, Richard's going to speak. Ladies of the Metropolitan District, as you know, Honest Jim Blake has cooked up a smear campaign to besmirch the good name of our candidate, Robert Colby. And I think it is only fair that you hear the true story from his own lips. And here he is, the Honorable Robert Colby. Ladies! Oh, 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 ladies! Oh, please! Oh, 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 listen to me, please! Let, 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 let the man have a chance. Let, Richard! Let, 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 Richard, they won't even let him speak. Yes, that's Jim Blake's doing. He's got oh. his co-workers out there to influence the other women. Oh, Richard, you mean we have no chance? No, nothing could win the election now. Nothing. Oh, look at that pompous crook, honest Jim Blake. <laughs> well, he's getting up on the platform. Look how cocky he is, Richard. You all know me, Honest Jim Blake. <laughs> thank you, thank you, lovely ladies, mothers, sisters, aunts, nieces. In fact, all of this lovely feminine pulchritude. It has been contended by my opposition that I am a thief. They will tell you I stole $1,842,000 from the taxpayers. I tell you, ladies, and I give you my solemn word, those figures are incorrect. <laughs> my opponents also contend that I secured my office through acts of violence. This is not true, and my former opponent would personally deny that if he were alive today. <laughs> but why should I ask you to take my word? Surely somewhere in the audience is someone who does not know me, yet knows the good that I've done. Get ready, chicken. That's you. Step forward. Anyone at all. Ah, here's a charming young lady. Who are you, young lady? I'm anybody at all. Uh, <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> You don't know me, young lady, do you? No, I just know the fellow that works for you. <laughs> Mere coincidence. Now, uh, will you tell these wonderful ladies what you think of me? Uh, well, now let me remember. Oh, I know. Uh, ladies, I don't know Honest Jim personally, but I know he will take everything the government will stand for. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I'm sure this young lady is, is just a little nervous. Yes, and I can't understand it. I was rehearsed so well. <laughs> Come on, chicken, run. But, but Al, what about your $5,000? You'll need that for flowers. Well, I'm still trying to gather my senses. All I remember of the women's meeting was that it ended with Honest Jim chasing Irma and Al down the aisle with a fire axe. This evidently convinced the women voters that Honest Jim wasn't exactly the fatherly type, for they have elected Robert Colby to consul almost unanimously. Now Irma thinks that she's America's foremost election authority. In fact, last night I said, Irma, 
A C where they're talking about making MacArthur president. And Irma said... Oh, I don't think so. Edgar Bergen would never let him go. (laughs) (laughs) You know, if Bergen ever needs another dummy, he can borrow my friend Irma. (laughs) 